So I'm uh, probably not going to be doing a whole lot of development in the upcoming week or two. Uh, I'll, I'll be talking about why over the course of this video, but I also um, I'll make a point that I have some just sort of discussion videos that aren't directly programming related that I needed to get around to. And uh, this is going to include uh, some of those topics. Um, obviously, first things first, why I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of development recently, uh, and not recently, I, well, I haven't been doing much the past uh, few days, uh, but this is going to extend for a while, it largely has to do with how my mind is, uh, priorities, you know, this is, the work I'm doing is largely either open source development or uh, the stuff you guys don't see is development for a business that I'm working on and uh, now that can that can hold off you've always got to put yourself first um, burnouts pretty bad especially the entrepreneurial kind so uh, put myself first for a little bit So, kind of the TLDR on what that whole situation is. Yeah, you know, inevitably you uh, you care about some people more than others. It's just kind of how things work. All sorts of reasons for that. Sometimes they just do more for you. Sometimes it fulfills some uh, deep-seated need. But I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of psychology shit, partially, because I don't always agree with all of it, but also it doesn't really matter. Yeah. There's all sorts of reasons for... Uh, behind that too all different ways in which you can care about somebody sometimes they're just a friend sometimes they're a, a romantic or sexual interest sometimes it's uh, other things entirely like a, some kind of business prospect yeah partnership rather I guess I might get rained on a bit In this case, it's complicated. I mean, isn't it always? But it's definitely one of the more complicated ones. Um, one thing, yeah may notice going throughout your lives is people tend to pair up based on what each other needs not not always of course you get some um, you get some more like companionship rather than uh, uh, codependence I guess not not in a like psychological codependence disorder kind of thing but just uh, codependence where you're contributing uh, things that each other needs rather than strictly relying on it. I can't think of a better name for it right now. Um, but anyways, you may have noticed rather overly serious, sometimes grumpy people like myself have a tendency... To uh, sort of attract, not necessarily in a romantic way, just sort of attract uh, people who are bubbly, goofy, less serious. The, the jokers who want to see everybody happy and smile, but aren't necessarily good at handling situations. And of course, sometimes that's, uh, a lot of the time, at least in my own experience, that's just 
friendly stuff. A lot of my friends are like that. In this case, it's uh, the girl I seem to have. Uh, maybe be getting feelings for. I'm rather meticulous with uh, details and understanding situations, so still trying to figure out how much of this is uh, just stupid hormonal shit versus I, whether or not I actually like her, but it's a uh, now, as I said, it's a complicated situation, and obviously what I just described is not that complicated yet. So, how it's complicated. I work with her. That's the first part. And I generally have a pretty strong policy of don't fuck where you work. Because if it goes south, it causes problems. The, uh... She's got a boyfriend. Can't even say that's the first time I've been in that situation. I'm kind of one of those assholes. Uh, the thing I will say is, if you gotta, if somebody's in a relationship and is happy about it, they, they won't leave. And I won't even try. This girl, she's not in a good relationship and she fucking knows it. As, uh, I mean, as much as we can rationally say oh if you're not happy just leave if you if you feel like you're being mistreated just leave it's one of those things that's easier said than done and i've been in that situation myself where you stick around too long and uh even if you know you should it's just hard bringing yourself to that point especially when there's a uh kid in the picture so yeah you're starting to see how this is a complicated situation i'm the grimiest motherfucker to walk this earth regularly uh two of them are regularly fighting uh, and a lot of nights at work seeing her cry over shit there yeah texting or calling each other about and look I'm not I'm not saying she's uh, innocent in all this but I don't fucking know I have basically no context at all in the situation just that the two of them clearly aren't happy with how much uh, how much this is going on and uh and even if I don't do anything, and at least at this point, I'm thinking I'm probably not going to do anything. Um, that's a messy situation I'd get myself in if I did. There's still the simple fact that uh, I do like this girl. She does benefit me in ways still even if I'm not with her you know you can you still be friends with somebody you know I, I, it, that that fucking bugs me when certain guys the nice guys get like that and you can you can still be friends with somebody and benefit in ways and you don't you don't have to get with every single girl who's your type you don't but
I still don't like seeing her like that, you know? And, um, I prioritize a uh, community, the, the people I'm around far more than I prioritize work, especially side jobs. And that's basically what this YouTube channel is. That's what the uh, programming I do is. It's side stuff. So, obviously, I'm going to be seeing exactly what's going on in the situation and what I can do to help, whether I should even get involved at all, that kind of stuff. Anyways, I uh, said I had a number of discussion topics to get to, and I figure, since I'm doing this anyways, I might as well get around to that. Uh, one thing people ask about a lot, because they figure, well, I must be a professional programmer, and I'm not. I actually have a whole video about that. Um, it's titled, I Am Not a Programmer, and uh, I do one of the card thingies to link to it, but YouTube keeps, keeps changing exactly how that whole thing works, so I'm just not going to bother, but um, I'll have a link to it down in the video description, because they don't change that, but uh, uh, I never really elaborated on what I actually am professionally. Work history largely started out with me as a cook, actually. Uh, and I don't mean fast food shit. I mean Italian restaurant where I was the only person who spoke English. Uh, friends of the family that... Well, I guess not even friends of the family, because they, they like married into the family. Uh, my aunt married uh, an Italian who came over with her. Uh, sort of a complicated situation there, but uh, yeah, these things happen. Hell, our, our current president is one of those. So, well, his wife is one of those, but yeah. The, um... He liked it over here. Some of his family followed, started up a restaurant. They all just spoke Italian, but I, uh, you know, it was a good way to, it was a good way to get a job. Because if a lot of people in my generation have really fucking hard time getting their first job. And so that helped me out big time. Did that for about two and a half years. Um, you know, this is the kind of place that basically did everything from scratch. So it was a very good learning experience. And then went on, uh, to work in a pizzeria. So not really what I would consider Italian food. Um, definitely more Italian American because you're doing pizza and a few side things, but, um, was actually the head cook there. It's, I mean, it's just a pizzeria, so it's not super special, but we are still talking about coming up with the exact way to do the, um, the pizza dough, the exact recipe for the sauce, all that stuff. Because, you know, I learned from these guys the importance of actually making the stuff uh, from scratch rather than just using the store-bought shit. Because... Like, canned marinara is not that great. And the store-bought dough is usually frozen ahead of the time, which really just makes the resulting, uh, resulting pizza taste sort of dry, and it doesn't quite rise right when you freeze the dough and then let it thaw. It's a... Yeah. 
So I did that for about a year and a half. Um, probably says a lot about how good I got at that when uh, six months after I had left to go to school, go to college, that is, they sold the business because, uh, well, closed the business, rather. Uh, they'd sell it a year later, but they closed the business because they couldn't find somebody to keep it operating like like I was. So I'm pretty proud of that. Eh, proud of how good I got, not proud of the fact that this business closed because I left. That I, I do feel bad for them. But if I had known what I do now, I probably would have stayed there. College was a huge fucking waste of time. But, anyways, I uh, originally went off to study psychology. I grew pretty bitter of the field over the course of my study. Uh, the third year, pretty much gave up on it entirely and grew to the immense disdain I have for the field. I um, took some time to think about what I wanted to do. And I took a year off. I would then work as a um, salesman doing uh, phone sales. So the phones themselves and the contracts. Uh, cell phones, to be specific, not house phone plans. Um, did that for just shy of a year. It was largely commission-based, although we did get some base pay. And um, that was a nice balance, I think, because it still compensated you for the non-sales part, like providing actual good customer service and shit like that. And helping them troubleshoot issues with their phones and stuff like that. And uh, I definitely stood out doing that, considering I got two raises within my first five weeks of being there. Uh, well, then later... After this, move on to get my CNA. So I wasn't really quite sure what exactly I wanted to do with my life. Do with my life at this point. And I'm come. I I come from a medical background. Uh, my dad's a physician. My mom's an RN. Quite a few other the members of the family are medical workers in one way or another. So I figured the nurse's aid cert is pretty cheap. State might even pay for it for me. Let's get it. And uh, just sort of get my foot in the water, see if I like this stuff. Uh, I did, and I would uh, stay in that field for about five years, not as a nurse's aide. I would actually, uh, rather shortly after I stopped, started working, uh, shifted into home care, um, where I was very shortly promoted from the PCA2 equivalent uh, up to an HHA and then get my LPN and then RN. That's right, an RN. And, um, yeah, like I said, I would do this for five whole years. I, um, the last year and a half. I actually went private practice 
And for those of you that are even remotely involved in that field at all, know that going private practice, especially after the PPACA was passed, was a fucking nightmare. But I managed to make that work. Um, reduced operating costs by 34%, brought in about 16% more profit while providing the exact same service of care, or quality of care, rather. So, pretty proud of that. But ultimately, the um, legal shit fucking clusterfuck that medical laws are drove me out of it it was just too much of a pain in the ass with all the shit that I had to keep track of and make sure it was secure and all the freaking shit you have to go through with the employees and it was just a massive pain in the ass so uh about eight months into me being private practice, friends started really pushing me, starting clothing business. Because you see, I've been learning how to sew, how to tailor, how to mend since I was nine. Uh, I know I have more experience with that than I do with anything else, even programming. I guess you could say I was kind of a weird kid because I started learning that when I was nine, started learning programming when I was 12, uh, 12 or 13. It was late in that year, 12 or 13. And, uh, so I've been building that up, getting all that shit done, making sure the products are really good, timing all the different stages of production extensively so that I can know exactly how long everything takes, where improvements can be made, how much improvements actually matter, stuff like that. Um, anybody who views my channel is really going to be that interested in exactly what I'm doing. But some of the programming I do that isn't open source is for that. So, seeing as this isn't my first business venture. I started to realize some things about how to fund business as well and how to not get yourself in as many risky situations, shit like that. Uh, largely funding this through bootstrapping means instead of investments. Uh, this means that the initial growth is definitely slower. I'm okay with that because I can just treat this as uh, side work build it up without risking my own ass. That's important because most business ventures actually fail. So unless you know, and I mean know, not just think you know, that you have a success, it's a lot safer to bootstrap. So I, uh, Working as a cook again. Been doing that for uh, about eight months now. And, um, no, about nine months now, actually. And, um, yeah, that's, I guess, go full circle with the start of this video. That's where. I know this girl from 
fun times. I gotta figure out that whole situation. I know, unfortunately, there's a whole awkward thing I gotta discuss with her as well that isn't related to me and her directly, but rather just sort of something that'd be beneficial for her to know and uh, even just as her manager, not as uh, her being a manager, not, a, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's that level of awkward. <sighs> um, I, uh, I gotta stop for a bit, so I'll, uh, sit down and continue this. So I guess, uh, third topic for this video, I am autistic. That's what I gotta talk with the manager about, and of course that's just a sort of good thing to know, uh, so sort of, yeah, it's tricky, I guess, really. A lot of people that really look down on that kind of shit, uh, misunderstandings and whatnot. Um, one of my big beefs with uh, a field of psychology, actually, is the the, um, the APA is one of the big ones contributing to the misinformation about the uh, about what autism is. Is heaven's fucking forbid you actually ask the people with it. Um, as long as you've uh, got somebody who's not super fucking judgmental, it's a good idea to let them know, uh, just because it helps explain some quirky parts of behavior and whatnot that are associated with it. And um, I'm not I'm not worried about her being uh, yeah, bitchy about it or anything like that. Um. I'm going to try to remember to edit a little clip into, well, not a clip, a, a screenshot of something into here, but I think it summarized things pretty well about how um, the view, uh, the views on autism, like back during the uh, whole vaccines cause autism bullshit, um, how a large number of people were saying that they'd rather risk their child being dead than have them turn out to be autistic. And it's like, yeah, that's how, that's how bad the views are on it. Um, I guess luckily in my case, I have a, a very rare form of it that makes it not so easy for people to tell. Um, very high functioning, as you can tell, having held down uh, numerous... Uh, numerous jobs where a degree of skill was actually required, uh, where focus is actually required, stuff like that, uh, where you have to be able to work with other people. Lord knows medical work, you have to be able to work with other people. And um, something like the classic autism, that you, they're never going to be able to, unfortunately. But the... Um, I'm very high functioning in a in a way that's different from Asperger's, where they're like uh, just kind of only care about one thing. And I'm hesitant to say that because the, nobody only cares about one thing. Nobody, but. You know, they're definitely just hyper-interested in that one thing. Um, it's not like that in my instance, as you can tell by juggling a large number of things. I'm clearly interested in a, a lot. Um, but it's sort of high-functioning in the same way that 
Yeah, I can still hail, uh, hold down a job. I've been in plenty of romantic relationships and shit like that. Just, uh, for anybody who knows what the signs are, yeah, what the major actual symptoms of uh, the, the different forms of autism are, it uh, is actually pretty obvious that I have it. Just, um, high functioning enough that most people who aren't familiar with that kind of stuff don't, don't actually pick up on it. But yeah, I gotta, I gotta explain that to this girl. Um, just because of the whole business side of things. Um, well, I say that, but it probably affects other things as well. Um, you know, like when I'm focusing on something and she's trying to talk to me or there are a few times where she's been a little, hmm, I'm not sure I want to call it flirty, but definitely not like super business oriented. It was definitely more like just straight up social stuff. I want to make you smile kind of thing. Yeah. Sorry, there was uh, another person on the trail of me walking the other way, and it's easier if I don't have to deal with the um, whole legal side of having other people appear and this kind of shit. Is, uh, if YouTube ever decides to sort of resolve their monetization stuff, uh, I would have been el eligible under their previous shit, and wow. Uh, you know, the moment you're actually uh, involved in commercial stuff and you have other people appearing in your shit, it's, um, you need uh, releases and shit like that. And it's just easier if I make sure that nobody appears in this so that I don't have to worry about it in the first place. And I was saying, um, Not all of her conversations with me have been strictly business. Uh, she actually tries a lot, a lot, a lot, uh, to get me to smile and shit like that. Um, so, you know, for those of you who aren't super familiar with one of the major things about autistic people is... Um, you can sometimes interact with them and they don't seem to respond at all. And, um, I take it from somebody who actually has the condition and isn't, um, isn't one of those psychologists talking down to people who have it. They're fully aware of everything that you're saying. Like, I will process everything that is said to me. The lack of response is because I'm busy doing something else, whether working on something or uh, even just thinking about something. Um, doesn't mean I'm not listening. Doesn't mean any autistic person isn't, isn't listening. Uh, just ask again say whatever it is again uh, when you can actually get their full attention and they will respond uh, completely respond but it's not that they're not listening or don't care it's it's just sort of like a hyper focus on whatever's going on so if you get their attention you have their full attention even if it doesn't always look like it the Eye contact can be kind of difficult sometimes with people that you're not close with, but um, if you have their attention, you have their full attention. If you don't, they're not. It's not that they're not listening; they're just not going to respond. Just ask again. But could tell one time. She got a little upset 
by this. Um, she was doing a lot of her goofy shit trying to get me to smile and I think she thought I was getting mad at her. She asked me uh, if it was bothering me that she'd back off. She just wants to see me smile. She doesn't want to upset me. And uh, of course being at work in the middle of dinner rush, I'm going to be focusing on that, not on uh, having a conversation with her. So, I, you know, I didn't respond and I, I think she took that as just me still being mad at her. Um, that's, yeah, I guess it does. I guess I do need to explain this for uh, personal reasons as well, not just business stuff. Bit of an incline. Ooh. Ooh. And, uh, Well, I'm uh, actually about at the top, so I figure show show you guys the view. Let's switch this over. It's uh. cloudy day it's probably gonna get some scattered showers uh, I don't really mind that I'm prepared for it but it's a hell of a view I know you guys can't see depth all that well uh, since there's not any good parallax going on and there's no stereoscopy but uh, this is about about 900 foot elevation over that lake so it's it's not a super high mountain I plan on doing some other stuff today but as long as the weather holds up but even if this isn't a particularly high or challenging mountain it's got a hell of a view there's uh some clearing that needs to be done though. The view used to be a lot better. But with that being so steep, uh, clearing that's gonna be interesting. So I guess having mentioned the whole thing about uh, me being autistic, I can add a little bit to the whole reasons why I'm not a programmer. And um, I do want to be clear, I'm not, that video was not made uh, with me never having worked as a programmer. Uh, I've done contract jobs and I have actually worked uh, for a few different companies very short term, uh, always resulting in me leaving. And um, the reasons why uh, 
largely stem from two things. One is very easy to understand in that with the bureaucracy that management uh, introduces, especially multi-level management, uh, I find it stifling. I find it, it just absolutely stifles any type of creativity in the solutions and whatnot. Um, and the whole thing about release deadlines stifles any ability to uh, do qu good quality assurance. And uh, let's face it, quality assurance is fucking important. Uh, if it was for better quality assurance, we wouldn't have things like the iPhone bend gate. So, yeah. Um... You'll notice, like with the Added Tools project or any of the libraries, there is no project deadline at all. Things get done as they get done. And I think you all can tell, even though this is side work and I have a main full-time job, I'm still keeping up a pretty rapid development pace. But it'll be done when it's done, when it passes a large test suite, when it meets certain quality standards, where it meets certain design and usability standards that I have not some arbitrary date. That being said, um, I have actually released a beta of it. The Ida Tools library itself, so that is the thing that really does everything, um, is actually packaged up and uh, available for use up on Nougat. Now, as of the last time I checked, which was a few days ago, there were 97 total downloads of the library, which is rather impressive considering it's a niche product for a niche language that I have not really advertised much of at all. So, it's off to a good start. Um, but yes, to be clear, it is absolutely beta code right now. But you can play around with it. Uh, please do. Please file bug reports. Please file pr feature requests. I would really appreciate the feedback. And, of course, if you would like to contribute to the project at all, I would really appreciate that as well. Um, I made sure that there was a, a file in the solution to provide uh, the formatting standards and everything else, so you don't even really have to worry about that. Uh, if you open it up in, I believe it's the dot .editor config standard, um, but if you open it up in any editor that supports that standard, it'll automatically uh, implement the correct stuff. and course with me developing in Visual Studio. Visual Studio is one of those editors, but uh, VS Code is as well. But, yeah, play around with, play around with that because it is available for use. I'd really like your feedback. And uh, yeah, I guess just to comment a little bit on how it's structured. The Ida Tools itself is really just the library. The uh, other stuff I've written, the other stuff in that solution, are just interfaces to it or test suites. All the interfaces really do is call the stuff in the library and format the output. That's it. Uh, this way everything is reusable. So that if you want to do a GUI based tool or something else entirely, like a a build server or whatever, it can be done without having to write new code or without having to call these command line tools. Because it's generally better if you don't have to do that kind of, uh, that kind of approach to development. But the other big issue I have with, um, with working for these companies has to do very specifically with the uh, me being autistic and um, how it's largely a requirement to work in teams with extensive amount of collaboration. And even though it's not a written rule in many of these places, uh, 
there is this, um, I forget what the name for the that type of culture is, but the business culture where you're largely expected to go out drinking and uh, other shit with people. To be clear, I have absolutely no problem with drinking. I'm very Irish. I drink a lot anyways. It's the required socialization that I have an issue with because uh, with me being autistic, there's some difficulties there anyways, and forcing it especially is uh, very unpleasant. Um, I would even argue illegal given the whole uh, uh, thing with the ADA and EEOC, but their uh, their approach is largely to say that uh, oh hey this is a required part of our business because uh, it's for collaborating on the projects even though it's not ever about collaborating on the projects if you ever actually go out to these things um, it almost seems like these fucking asshats can't make friends because they're such pieces of shit that they have to largely force it their own coworkers and uh, subordinates to be their friends just, just fucking pathetic. It's like, come on, when somebody who's on aut autistic has an easier time making friends than you, clearly you're fucking doing things wrong. But you know how arrogant uh, middle management business people get. So, yeah, I. Uh, find it easier to work in very small teams where, or even just by myself, but very small teams where um, communication and friendships and things like that just happen more organically rather than forced. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, for some reason, these tech businesses really just force this kind of culture hardcore. Um, startups especially, but I've seen issues of this nature in, in bigger places, like I've mentioned. And, uh, of course, certain big businesses, big tech businesses, have an additional problem with them being so ridiculously politically correct. Google's a great example of this. <laughs> well, they'll look at me, someone like me, and see straight white male and think that I'm privileged and do all these things to... Uh, you know, restrict access to things because, hey, we, we need to provide this to those less fortunate and absolutely no regard to that I am legally recognized as being disabled. Whereas these other people that these businesses will cater to instead are just recognized as being disadvantaged, not disabled. But that's how they operate, and uh, I'd just rather have no part of it. I'm very passionate about programming, and I want to focus on the actual code, the actual projects, the actual solutions, not the business culture. So I find it way easier to operate with this stuff on the side. I maybe turn some of this stuff into a business. I'm sure there's parts of what I do that I could actually market uh, to like a B2B uh, business model. Um, business to business, for those not familiar with the lingo. Um, I just, I don't, I don't want to work for these businesses. I don't. Even as, even as social as medical work has to be, um, I can do that. I've done that. But it's focused on the job. I'd just rather do other types of work. <laughs> 